Good morning, all. Can you hear me now? Can I get the response in the chat? Can I just put that I can you can hear me? Uh, because people might not be knowing why you're putting yes there. Thank you. Uh, okay. Guys, please don't switch on your video. Please do not switch on your videos, guys. Please consider this. Please uh, stop your videos because I do not have a privilege to stop any of the videos who switched on. So please switch, switch it off. If you're not getting that new video notification at the end, just minimize that. Hide the thumbnail video. That's it. If you're not getting that videos, if you're not on the accidentally switched it on, just minimize that. Things would be fine. You can't. No one can able to see that. Uh, you will be uh, eliminated in seeing watching of the videos. Okay. So let's start a workshop, guys. So I welcome you all for this workshop on big data for both today and tomorrow. So we have a lot of things to discuss. And the people whom I already know in this workshop, I welcome you all for that. So here, what we're going to discuss today and tomorrow is we're going to start off with uh, complete basics on Hadoop. Okay, let me uh, let me share my entire screen for you. Okay, so what agenda of the entire workshop is, it's gonna be completely, we're gonna start with big data basics. Basics information, I could say. We're gonna start with very basic information of big data. And we're gonna start a uh, bit data evolution, how the data got evaluated from past many years. Because this particular workshop is completely for beginners. And also advanced concept will hit up tomorrow. But today we're gonna see completely basics for the beginners who's starting their career as big data, who has aspiration towards big data from the scratch, and just uh, starting from that scratch. And uh, from that, we'll be starting with very basic information. Start with big data basics, data evolution. Then you're gonna see Hadoop. Every, uh, everyone can able to hear. Hope everyone can able to hear me, right? Please check your audio.
Yeah. So we're going to start with big data basics. Thank you, Srikant. So uh, we're going to start with data evolution, then Hadoop introduction, Hadoop framework introduction, SDFS. In between, you're going to create a cluster in Azure. We're going to create a cluster in Azure today itself. Today itself, we're going to create a cluster in Hadoop. Hadoop cluster, big data cluster in Azure cloud. Yeah. Uh, it, it, Okay. Few initial audio issues. So I'm just texting everyone. So creating Azure cluster, Azure is uh, creating a cluster in Azure. And then uh, we are also, we are also going to see Linux commands, SDFS commands, scoop. Hive, Spark. These are the agenda for tomorrow, today and tomorrow. These are very high level introduction for everyone. Uh, so, guys, can you want to see my screen, right? Yes. Do everyone can you want to see my screen? So Spark. So this is a very high level command. So coming to very basic information on Hadoop, we're going to see uh, careers also in Hadoop. Careers also in Hadoop, how the how the career is going to be in next 10 years down the line in big data. Everything will be discussed today. And this is agenda for today and tomorrow. Today is completely the basic information and how the data got evaluated, how the Hadoop got evaluated. And tomorrow is completely hands-on, completely hands-on. Today is the basics for tomorrow. So please make use out of this workshop today and tomorrow for better knowledge. So in case of any queries, you can put, you can ping in chat and the routes which you post, I'll just check whether it's a right time to answer because the people of 80 people got connected today. So I'm not, uh, I, not all the time I can able to answer all the people. So at times I'll just, uh, just post your question. I'll see whether it's the right time to answer your question or I'll skip the question. Please do not mind because of, because of the high people, high people got connected. Please do not mind. So coming to uh, agenda, so this is agenda. I'm just pasting this in agenda in your chat. Uh, please have this for your reference till tomorrow. Okay. So coming to recordings, please give me some time. First attend the workshop, we can think about the recording later. I can't assure you that I can get definitely give the provide the recording. Please make use out of it today and tomorrow. Later on, you can think about it. Please don't completely rely on it. Let's start the workshop. Okay. So big data, the word which has been coined, which has been discussed, which has been high in the market, highly in the production, the word known as big data, whoever we speak about, okay, this is big data. Oh my God, it's a very good technology. This has been spoke from years, from past many years, big data, the word which is highly on demand. Even people not know, it's not, people doesn't know what is big data is all about, actually, uh, not everyone. Few people are not known about big data, but wherever they hear about the big data, the word, when we hear about it, definitely we think that's a very good technology, but even though we don't know about it. So how it is getting emerged, how it is getting used from past many years, how, uh, how why big data careers are very much demand, why big data professor high, profiles are highly paid. What makes it so special? Everything will be discussed, okay? From the scratch, I'll start. Why it is demand? I'll, I'll discuss about demand and supply also. Why, why there is a demand, why there is a supply, okay? Why there is so much of demand? Why there is highly paid? That out, there is a demand on the technology that the profiles will be highly paid, obviously, right? And also, big data is also part of uh, root for creation of data science in which machine learning artificial intelligence wherever the data data do present this these are the some of the places where we do a lot of research over the data the one thing which is very popular in this entire world on which the entire world is living okay entire world is living with the only one term known as data without data there is nothing exists 
nothing exists in this entire world we do not have anything without data can everyone everyone agree with me guys i will also unmute everyone in between for posting your doubts limited doubts so please control i you can post me in between also and clarify it if it's the right time but in between i'll have give a chance for everyone to post your queries so don't don't no worries this session may extend till 12 or 12:15 in between we do have a break please have a book and a pen the information which i'll be providing for the next 3 hours are very important okay those who can't able to get uh, same time hesham hesham same time tomorrow in from california time yeah so please take a note and pen it's very important for all of you to do this uh, setup so that's what it goes coming to the data part why data is on highly on demand why we speak data is high demand how data is demand first of all how data is on demand demand states okay we can change the world we can change the business we can change the globe okay in definitely an opposite direction what are the direction we we face depends on the data depends on completely data people might be from data background they people might not be from data background let me give a very basic layman example okay without data there is no proper us government today without data trust me i'm not sure how many people are aware of it without data there is no trump donald trump government today in us okay without data amazon will not amazon amazon guy the ceo of chairman founder of amazon guy will not be a top most billionaire in this world without data without data nothing exists without data none of the software companies do run right so how that actually do how the how how actually data plays a vital role how the data plays a very vital role let me give a very good example for you okay how donald trump won the elections any idea how the donald trump won the elections in us any idea there is there is a there is a one of the police cases in between charged against one person the most popular person who uh who is one of the main reasons for donald trump to win the elections in us the previous time who is the main reason the most popular ceo in this world mark zuckerberg who is mark zu mark zuckerberg any idea who is mark zuckerberg he'll be ceo why he got investigated in congress government there why he got investigated the only thing is in fb facebook whoever discuss about donald trump okay he captured the data and then sold the data to cambridge analytica a company known as cambridge analytica fb ceo and founder mark zuckerberg has been paid to send the information on donald trump what are the discussion is done in donald about donald trump in fb that has been captured and send the data to cambridge analytics company where the analytics is happening on top of that analytics donald donald trump government has has just uh, found what are the leakages what are the loopholes how people talking about him where he can able to emerge himself where he can show his uh, marketing better so all this decision has been made because of just data that's it just data yes so let's think about very very layman status okay in our day to day life in our day to life right? we we have cell phones we have whatsapp we do have everything in our phone in our laptops we have everything let's think about how much data you can able to save in your phones how much data you save in your laptops right see about see your world like you have a cell phone the the company cell phone company i am using xiaomi xiaomi company will be having this particular guy sai has bought this phone in so and so date so and so model then he visited service center this many times laptop then think about the laptop this company the company laptop will be knowing that you have you have you bought this laptop leave about this leave about this day to day life think about your day to day e-commerce things you just visited one of the products in your e-commerce in amazon or flipkart how come when you visit other applications you can able to see those those, those products in those applications who is driving it where the data got captured 
who is giving the data to whom how they're increasing their business how they're increasing the market standards everything around you if you see it's a data if you see around you everything is a data okay you bought a house you bought a house that has been registered in the government of india in a particular database and server right now we just uh, done the itr returns income tax returns every income tax returns has been recorded in the government of india page getting it so they have the data okay if someone came to know okay there's some illegal activities is going on they to do the analytics on top of the data analytics is nothing but doing some analysis and taking the decision factor taking the decision factor getting it so if you see especially if you take me some other examples like e-commerce websites okay if you do any e-commerce website amazon or flipkart as i just mentioned okay they do lot of analytics on people's product why this person is on toy on top of which products this person is targeting his views they'll do lot hell of analytics on top of it that is the rent that is the reason data is on demand data engineers are highly paid data okay whenever we speak about uh, whenever we speak about the demandful technologies in this world very demandful technologies whenever we speak about the demand technologies once upon a time they told they told sql then so for 1990s they told sql developers are highly on demand then etl developers are highly on demand then big data developers then we are we are talking about data there's a data science scientist wherever we go whenever we speak about the technology we always data do exist in that etl etl is also part of the etl data in which we take the data processing so what i'm saying is data is on high on demand data analytics is 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 highly paid but coming to data analyst okay data data analytics everyone good so far so what is this big data okay why uh, even since the data is highly on demand data analytics is highly on demand what makes what are the limitations we face in the data analytics see just imagine let me just imagine everyone is having your fb accounts for example everyone is having your fb facebook that's how we got connected today right we have uh, facebook accounts we have amazon account let's take facebook account okay i i i signed up in facebook in the year of 2011 i think so 2000 2009 i signed up in facebook 10 years ago i, I signed up in facebook i created an account in facebook similarly in 9 2009 2000 2005 44 at the facebook got launched it similarly in the year of 2005 how many of them have created the accounts how many of them are having accounts today have you ever faced any facebook have you ever faced a cross mark like other profiles is populating in front of you other facebook accounts are populating in front of you or you logged into some other account when you gave login password whether you log into some other account no have you ever feel any deletion of data from past 10 years in you you uploaded the fb account on that data do without your intention do that got deleted without in, without your intention do the likes which you got once upon a time in the year of 2007 or 2006 or 2009 do ever that that got faded away no definitely not that data is stored somewhere else getting the point all of you that data got stored at particular place and the data is retrieved with respect to any data okay coming to the point with respect to any data two things are very important maybe the maybe the data data engineers will be knowing maybe the who are from sql or who are from etl background maybe definitely knowing these two terms with respect to data i i didn't start big data yet guys please leave out big data i'm just telling you very basic information on data okay two things are very important with respect to data what is data compared to data two main two main things which is important is storage and processing please note this down with respect to data two may two things are very important two things are storage and processing
Okay. Malik has asked me a question. What is the difference between data science and big data? Are they interrelated? Which is a better data? Which is better data? Data and big data or data science? Okay. Let me give a very few information on this. Okay. Right now, since we don't have much time today. See, uh, Malik. Just imagine. Okay. You you just got the data and you're processing it. Say for example. Uh, you got a dump of 100 GB of data, okay, 100 GB of data from different countries. You got dump of 100 GB of data from different countries, okay. From the different countries of data, you just want to filter some data. You want to filter some data, say mail records, some male or female mail records, okay. That 100 GB of data you will save somewhere else and you process the data. That is data engineering that comes under big data. Data engineering. Save it, process it. Data engineering. Is this clear, Malik Sofa? Data engineering is nothing but save it, process it. Big data is clear. Data engineering is clear, right, Malik? Yes. Coming to data science, okay? Coming to data science. Okay maximum data science comes under prediction prediction predicting something even predicting is also a part of data science coming to prediction okay knowing about the data maybe none of the data science or prediction is 100 percent right but at least if we reach around 80 percent of the prediction it would be fine what is this prediction okay collect collect and collecting the num many years of data and telling you next year whether we'll have the disaster whether we'll have tsunami or earthquake next year not today Considering for 20 years of data, seeing analyzing 20 years of data, okay, we have to analyze, we have to provide the analytics whether next year we'll have the tsunami or earthquake. Because 10 years ago, during the, during the same situation, the earthquake appeared. Okay, take the data, do the analytics, and tell me whether next year we'll get the, day, we'll get the tsunami or earthquake. So that is nothing but a kind of a prediction. As many, very, I'm just giving a very high level knowledge. That's nothing but a prediction. To create that scenario, to achieve that prediction, we'll we'll go ahead with uh, ML libraries, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So that's a very basic knowledge I'm giving you. I'm not going in deeper. So that comes under data science prediction. As for now, just consider prediction for now is a data science. Data processing is nothing but big data. Clear, right, Malik? So coming to okay, what is this big data mean? <laughs> why why this data this word is so powerful? Okay, from past many years. Just imagine, think in this way. Okay, I oh, hope everyone know about Flipkart Big Billion Day, right? Flipkart Big 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 Billion Day. How come how come uh, in that Big Billion Day, Flipkart can able to handle millions and billions of customers at a time? At a time, he can able to handle it. At a time, everyone can able to do any anything they want. They will not have any servers down. First thing. The second thing is, as I told you, with respect to big data, two things are very important. Two things are very important. Not only big data, any data, data engineering or data processing, two things are very important. Please note it down, storage and processing. Storage and processing. Please note it down. Okay, guys, please wait till the end of the session. Within 10 minutes, you will not understand anything. Going forward, everything will be cleared and clarified. Okay, please do not quit the meeting without if you don't understand. Please wait till the end of the session. And I can tell you something, those who are attending the entire session, I can recommend, I can take up the names during the end of the 12, end of the session, I can provide the video access to them. So please don't go to the meeting. Till the end of the session, you'll understand the pulse of it at the end. Okay storage and processing okay we have to store the data we have to process the data okay let me put let me put one of the examples okay in sql db what we'll do that's a database we save the data inside the database and we do some sql queries on top of it right sql is nothing but we save the data and we process the data 
that was his SQL for us, right? In that case, if I got a chance to handle large set of data sets, okay, SQL, I have a proper server, okay, I have a proper server, and we, we're just trying to put the data of 1 GB, fine, 1 GB is acceptable in SQL, it's not much costlier. 5 GB, okay, I have to invest a bit. 10 GB, I have to bit invest some more. What about 1 TB? What about 10 TB? One, what about 1 TB, petabyte? What about hexabytes? Zettabyte, Yotabyte, Brontobyte, Geobyte. The data is increasing. Things are not the same. People are not sitting with MBs now. Nobody is sitting with MBs. Even people are not sitting with GBs now. People are sitting with TBs, PBs. We didn't enter into still XR. We didn't enter into exabyte yet. We're still sitting with PBs, petabytes. The world used to be megabyte. Then we, the, we during the starting of my career, I'm in gigabyte. Then people started talking about terabyte. Then people are also starting about petabyte, PB. Then future, they may start about hexabyte. People are still talking, exabyte, then zettabyte. That's how the, the life will be going on. We can't able to withstand that in SQL server. We can't able to put that petabyte of data in SQL, we process it. SQL server will, will die. Not possible. Think about it. You are an Amazon customer. How many crore people, how many billion of people in this entire globe are the customers for Amazon? How many billions of people? Where he's saving the data? Where the Amazon person is saving the data? The data getting saved in uh, in uh, getting in in these servers. Whether how much how much how much investment he has to do to save the data? Just imagine, just imagine. There are a lot of things to consider when data is considered. A lot of investment, which is not possible. Half of the revenue will be generated to investing of for data servers, SQL. So what Amazon is doing? Live about Amazon. Okay, Amazon is a customer. Then what is going to be the case? Think about the Facebook. How many accounts are getting created? How many comments are posted? How many likes are given? How many photos are getting uploaded? How many groups are created? How many of them posting in groups? It's a very big story. The data is very huge. He can't able to withstand the data in SQL servers. Not at all. Then what next? What is what is the best approach? Okay. Then people are in this entire world has completed a question mark in the, in the year of 2005, kind of. Okay. 2005, 2006. Completed a question mark. Where to go? See, the right now, the data which we have is very exponential data compared to the year of 2005. Very exponential. Think about whether we have mobile devices that time whether we have systems, a lot of systems, whether we have e-commerce sites that time, whether we have social networking that time, nothing out of this 15 years back, we don't have anything. But think about right now. In the year of 2004, they predicted, okay, down the line after 15 years, the data is gonna be very huge. What is the best option? In the year of 2004, guys, think about in the year of 2004, 15 years ago, what is the best option? The only person who gave the hope those time, the only person who gave the hope for the upcoming emerging technology is Doug Cutting. His name is Doug Cutting. He's the only person who gave a hope. Guys, you don't worry about anything. The thing which I'm gonna find, which I'm gonna create for all of you to this world will withstand such data. You don't worry about it. Who is the founder of the Data Hadoop Framework? Who is the founder of Big Data Hadoop Framework? Okay. Then Big Data, this Hadoop Framework of Big Data has provided a very big hope for everyone. Okay, I can increase my business with very less cost. With very less cost, I can increase my business. That's how the big data has came into this market. Okay, fine. In 2004, just imagine in 2004, but today we are talking about big data. From past four years, it emerged a lot. But in 2004 itself, we got this big data Hadoop framework. Think about it. How many years it took to emerge into this industry? But that became highly on demand. 
that's one of the main reasons for us to connect today this guy duck cutting has provided a very big hope okay i'm there for you to help then hadoop framework came into picture we'll speak about hadoop framework going further you don't worry about it i believe i'm starting from the from the scratch i'll we'll speak about hadoop framework you don't worry about it but just seen a very layman status this person and other person mike kafrilla who is a founder of big data hadoop framework okay we'll take we'll we'll take it further we'll speak about it further so everyone is clear with this explanation any doubts so far guys so in this agenda let me let me explain agenda what we're going to see today to the people who just joined okay agenda is we're going to start with big data basic information data evolution hadoop introduction hadoop distributed file system creating a cluster in azure till here we'll be covering today tomorrow completely hands on linux commands sdfs commands scoop hive and spark the three of us we left today tomorrow this is the agenda for today and tomorrow guys so these the the one which we're going to discuss is no, nobody can able to give a very big knowledge within 6 hours i have planned professionalized i have just customized in the way you have to understand within the 6 hours don't worry i'll make you to understand the entire big data world today and tomorrow in your in your hand okay so this what the this what the this what the agenda for today and tomorrow okay if you want you can take the pic or i'll, I'll also post it in the group okay yes so going forward yeah everyone is clear the basic information i'm just unmuting everyone guys please be patient in posting the question please everyone will be unmuted please do not unmute for uh, if you don't have any questions i'll be giving other two to three minutes for posting your doubts whatever please let me know okay i'm just unmuting everyone if you have any any doubts you can post the questions yes I give the privilege. Any doubts so far? You can unmute and pose the question. Everybody started checking, unmuting them. Okay. Okay. I'm going forward. I'm going forward, okay? yes that's a very basic information okay so now we're gonna go in for a very important slide data evolution how the data got evaluated most important slide for today guys today's most important slide i'm gonna make you understand how the data got evaluated how the data got processed okay as i told you which is something very important for us to understand is with respect to data storage and processing you've been discussing right storage as well as processing which is something very important for us to understand from past many years how the data is stored how the data is processed that's what we're going to discuss now the most important slide this mess this slide might go for other half an hour to 40 minutes the main motor for us to understand is okay ram is asking me how we consider the data is big data uh Ram, simple Ram. Big data is nothing but the name. Name itself is the coin. Big data, very large data. That's it. That's it. If I'm dumping 10 GB of data in a SQL server, that is also a big data. Everything is big data. Big data is a technology. Hadoop is the framework which supports big data a lot. Even ETL comes under big data. Why we call Hadoop and Hadoop framework? as a big data is hadoop framework is a framework which is found to support very big data very large data big data is nothing but large set of data sets tbs clear right ram yeah that i'll be sharing this ppt like if I found that, if, like if I found that who are happening till the end of the session, definitely they can able to make use out of it. I'll be noting down the names also. Yeah. So coming to the most important slide for today, data evolution. Okay. Two things as I told you. What makes 
the data to say what, what what's the difference between this uh, different platforms of data storage two things you need to consider is storage and processing i told you right storage and processing two things you need to consider no basaraj no 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 i'll come to that i'll come to that okay so two things are very important storage and processing just imagine okay in the era of 1960s just imagine we do not have proper proper uh, guys leave up the slide you can analyze everything slide later just you just see what i'm saying okay this is the most important just imagine in nine, you live in 1960s you live in 1960s where we do not we do not have a proper uh, physical setup to save the data just imagine you are going for a shop very layman status just imagine in 1960s in 1960s you are just going for a shop in a supermarket shop okay and you buy two products what he'll do he'll take a pen and paper he'll just write it down what what we have what we just uh, what what we just bought 1960s he'll just note it down okay this this is bought this is bought this is the bill okay this is what you have bought let's consider you have a supermarket in 1960 supermarket in 1960 supermarket in 2019 let me come to that okay supermarket supermarket in 1960 when you go and buy something the shopkeeper will write it in a paper by end of by end of the day he will see what is sold what is what is extremely sold highly sold which is on high demand which product is getting sold immediately he want to do some analysis on top of it what he'll do he'll just write it in a paper after every customer crosses he'll just write it in a paper paper is nothing but my storage paper is nothing but my storage analytics analysis is nothing but my brain you you will see it in a paper you start counting which product has sold a lot so here who is storing who is storing the data who is processing the data storage is nothing but my paper processing is nothing but the shopkeeper's brain clear right all of you so far clear then in in 1960s in 1960s we suddenly got something known as systems microsoft we do have linux before we do have uh, systems got emerged in which we started right into a text pad text pad we used to have linux in that times text pad right in that text pad the shopkeeper got a text just imagine 19, after 1960s shopkeeper got a system computer system we used to call computer system that time computer system and we got a uh, notepad that time when we start writing notepad data into that notepad he try and save it the storage right now is nothing but my computer system hard disk again the analytics is nothing but my brain i'll open that notepad and i'll see which products has been sold a lot here analytics is my brain storage is nothing but the notepad hard disk notepad right after that in 1970s in 1970s we got something known as dbms right okay yes i'm just unmuting everyone please interact with me but please do not unmute if not if you don't have any questions please it may interrupt others if i find the same i have to i don't have any option to mute everyone so please consider this I have unmuted you can interact with me by responding me in your voices and whatever yeah okay can you check can you check unmuting yourself and put a word as give a check word yeah it's fine this is straight up yeah perfect thank you thank you thank you sure so dbms what is a dbms is actually what is a dbms what is the full form of dbms guys i going to clear and clarify right now how data got evaluated in 1960s we just got text files in 1970 we got dbms what is a dbms mean a database management system example of a dbms excel sorry excel oracle okay oracle No, Oracle is a DBMS. It can be Fox Pro. Mainframe. 
Yeah. Whether Oracle falls under DBMS or RDBMS? It's RDBMS. Oracle is RDBMS. What falls under DBMS then? Mainframe DB, COBOL, COBOL files. Uh, okay. Well, that, that is something which came later. But the basic DBMS, I'm just missing a word. What is basic DBMS? It can be Excel sheet. Excel sheet. Yes. Excel sheet is nothing but a DBMS. Database management system. What we want, say for example, guys, please, okay. Please mute after you have responded, please. Just, just help me with this. Okay. So, you get, so DBMS. Say, in the 1960s, we got DBMS in market. The same flip, say, supermarket, the same super, supermarket shopkeeper started using Excel sheet in that Excel sheet. We do not have Excel sheet that time. Moreover, that Excel sheet is something very different. We do not have any Excel sheet that time. Basaraj, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. So, so we got Excel sheet in between. So, and he, again, many, many customers are floating into the supermarket and he is trying to write all the data in an Excel sheet. Excel sheet, Excel sheet, start to enter everything in an Excel sheet. Later on, he will try to do the analytics on top of it at the end. Okay, this time he's not necessary to use his brain much because Excel sheet will do the sum and give the count also. Making things easier because data is getting increased. Data is not the same in 1960s. In the 1970s, data is so huge compared to 1960s. Okay, that made human effort to go less. At a particular point of time, we, our brains are not enough. Completely right now, the data we have is not easy for us to do with our brain, without any system support. So in our RDB or DBMS, just consider we have Excel sheet and we break the sum and count. Okay, we got the something known as some results. Somehow I'm experiencing results. Well and good. Again, data got increased. DBMS can't able to withstand the data because Excel sheet can now also uh, just imagine Excel sheet can also allow the duplicates also. I mean to send denormalized data, duplicate data. Excel sheet can Excel sheet can save the duplicate data also. This is another denormalized data, which is the biggest issue that time. And data got increased. In 1980s, data got increased furthermore. Where they want to save the data, where they can able to process the data, where they can able to do an analytics on top of the data. During that time, one person raised hand, he'll say RDBMS. He just raised his hand and came in. You don't worry, I'm there. Relational Database Management System. Right? RDBMS. Then we spoke about RDBMS, Oracle SQL Server. Uh, Oracle it just came later, but we got SQL Server. Right? So later on, later on, slowly in RDBMS got emerged. Even RDBMS do exist right now. Like RDBMS, we got SQL Server, then we got Oracle. Then we got uh, NetEza, PostgreSQL in the recent times also. So this is nothing but RDBMS. What RDBMS will do, we have a primary key concept in that. It can normalize the data. It will not allow the duplicates data. Then the same shopkeeper opens open laptop, or sorry, system, and he installed RDBMS in that. I mean to say SQL Server in that. Then he started providing uh, kind of analytics on top of it. And the most important factor for RDBMS is it can divide the schema, not only single DB. He can save the product information in one table. He can see customer information in one table. He can see price tra price tracks in other table. So it can able to divide the data and we can able to provide the normalized. See, things are making easier. As a data, as a information, as a problem comes into picture, someone is ready to that the solution. When the problem comes into picture, someone is there to provide the solution. Between 1970 and 1960, there are a lot of problems in increase of the data as well as providing a proper information to the data. But in 1970, people came up with RDBMS as one of the concepts which can able to help people to withstand large amount of data and we can process the large amount of data. Then again in 1990, many problems came into picture. What are the many problems? The first problem for every 10 years, every decade is nothing but increase in the number, size of the data. Increase in the size of the data. Getting it right, all of you? This increase in the size of the data is hindering the frameworks. I can't be able to use text files with the data present in 1980s. I can't be able to use DBMS 
with the data present in my 1990s. DBMS is simply Excel sheet. It will just provide the information of calculating something. That's it. RDBMS is Oracle database system. It can normalize the data. It can divide the different type of data in a separate tables. Say for example, if I'm saving it in a notepad, okay, just 1960s. Say it in notepad. Okay, Sai so came today, bought cookies, 40, 40 rupees. Vira came to today and he bought juice. He got 70. Again, I may say Sai cookies. I may, I'm not sure. I might increase giving the data, wrong data, some duplicate data also. First thing, I can provide this. So this is how the text file used to be. Then coming to Excel, coming to a kind of uh, Excel sheet. Okay. Okay, Sai came today. He bought cookies. Forty. Vira came today. Juice. Sai again came today. Cookies. Not again. The same data is getting populated. But if I do sum like this, I can immediately get the sum of 140. That's how the human efforts got reduced in 1960s, 1970s. Uh, but there is a normalization of data. I don't completely denormalize data. Psi and psi here. Then RDBMS came into picture. Different tables, different schemas. Uh, save product information separately. Price tag separately. The customer information separately. Like that, the data got divided. But still 1990s, the data got huge. Data is so huge. Then data warehousing came into picture. Can anyone tell me what is data warehousing? Any cloud explanations? What is data warehousing? Uh, that is to store historical data. Number one, awesome, awesome. Then? Yeah, basically, uh, non-transactional data for operational purpose, not for transactional purpose. On perfect, perfect. Yeah. Legacy data. I can say legacy data, right? I can say like that. Legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So coming to data warehousing. Okay. It's so coming to data. What is data warehousing? Okay. What happened? You know. Just imagine. Okay. I work in one of the MNCs as a big data developer currently. Okay, in that MNC, let's consider one of the top most MNCs in India or nothing but TCS. One of the service based top companies, TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. That Tata Consultancy Services is almost, the age of Tata Consultancy Services is almost 40 years. Launched with one name and later on, right, that is TCS right now. Right? So, even now, TCS know where the, who joined fifth, who is the fifth employee of TCS? Who joined the 40 years ago? Guys, can you hear me? Is it audible? Yes, it's audible, but it's breaking a little bit now. Oh, is it fine now? Yeah, I just got to know it got broken in between. Is it fine now? The voice is perfect. Yeah. So I'll be knowing. If it got broken, I'll be knowing. I'll Sorry. repeat it then. Yeah. yeah, if it got broken, I'll be knowing it. I'll repeat it again if something got missed. Okay, so data warehousing is nothing but historical data storage. Historical data storage. What I'm saying is, uh, here let's let's let put it this way. See, I have three dBs of TCS. Okay, three dBs of TCS. Current IT employee, de employee details in RDBMS. Just consider this is one RDBMS. Current IT employee, employees. Current security employee. For example, I'm just telling you, okay? Very basic example. Current admin employees. Right? This is nothing but my current DBs. It's a completely different database. Like Oracle, this is completely one RDBMS, two RDBMS, three RDBMS. Legacy data, who already left the company.
legacy data who already left the organization consist of the data here right if any of the it employee data leaves he'll reach to this master db getting to this point this is a legacy which is very huge data this is very huge very huge data this is current data for example okay this is current data in this legacy data if i see if any anyone want to do some analytics can anyone tell me now guys is it audible now yes it's audible yeah so if you want to do some analytics he wants very simple analytics how many current it employees exist in my company which let's consider this is one this is two this is three one two and three how many current it employees present who which will i consider to do this analytics which rdbms it's one 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 great i'll go ahead with this i want to know current admin employees i'll go with three how many current full employees present in tcs full employees in all sections how many can provide the analytics what one two three one two three awesome how many how many employees has left how many employees just stepped into tcs the question is how many of the employees stepped in TCS? Whether they left or not, it's a different story. How many of them joined TCS so far? On top of what I need to provide? One and legacy. Uh, sorry, yeah. One, two, three and legacy. I need to do analytics on top of all this data. But historical data to make this is completely legacy legacy data. I can't do this present in some DB. Then I have to get this data to back to some place where i need to do some analytics because this is just a legacy data which is present in some other systems a master db i need to place it in some place to do this analytics which is this is something legacy data is not used every time during that time legacy data is not used that time highly used data is current data for example but right now you know what happens my voice is breaking aditya you are your voice is breaking down. Okay. Just give me one sec. Am I audible now? Yes, am I audible now? Yes, now. Yeah. It's okay. Yes, yes. Sorry for that. Uh, okay. So I want to do some analytics on top of legacy data. See, legacy data is not used all the time. No, uh, say for example, TCS don't use that analytics on top of this legacy data much because it, at times it needed, it needed. Okay, the legacy data has came into some place to do that analytics on top of it. But you know what happens in the current stage, in the current world, not even legacy data, not even current data, every data, will increase their business every data say for example if you're going if you're just uh, you're just deactivating your fb account or any any data okay he'll just do analysis on top of it right if many people are leaving deactivating their fb account is it for everyone Yeah, it's just yes, it's for everyone. Yeah, I can also let, let me reconnect. Let me reconnect. Let me reconnect.
yes am i audible now yes now you are audible yeah i just connected to other network please let me know if you face any issues it is fine right now isn't it yeah now it's okay yes sir yeah. yeah. thank you guys thank you so this current employee okay this current employee see if i want to if i want to do analytics on top of current employees what are the analytics not only count not only count okay so i just want to current employees i'll just consider this only one data that is fine only one rtbms security data yes one security data any, any analytics okay whether what is the salary part of it what is the count whatever if you want current admin, admin employees this if you want to put analytics on top of all the employees who join tcs i need to consider all the legacy data as well as current data but right now we are in the world where each and every information is important even on top of legacy data who joined who is not joined who why he joined see legacy data present here why he joined the data he wants to do analytics why he joined current employees joining information will be here but legacy data joining information will be here he want to compare these two at a time then he what i'm saying is legacy data is not something okay put it somewhere else put it in garbage whenever you want take it out that's actually legacy data put it in a put it in dustbin take whenever you need that's what is legacy but right now the analytics is highly costly to do analytics on legacy data also that mean legacy data should be always available in your hand to do increase your business in in very high level we need all the data at place we can't have master db to place and take the data whenever we need do the analytics whenever no not like that every data is important to increase your business right at at at, at the stage right now you can't put it somewhere and take whenever you want no not like that guys am i audible to everyone yes yes sir. Yes, yes yeah Na navin it is audible to everyone can you please check from your end thank you yeah so that's what is legacy data so ultimately i have i should have data in place if i have data in place the biggest issue will be storage okay storage is not a problem okay somehow we'll increase the server no no issues we'll, we i'm ready to invest not a problem i'm ready to invest i'll interest lakhs and crores of data that's not a problem for me okay i can but but now tell me now tell me there is a there is almost 1 tb of 2 tb of data of current employees i have 1 tb of data of current employees okay i have 1 tb of data in current employees he wants to provide and he wants to uh, we want to provide a count out of it 1 tb storage is not a problem i'll i'll invest lakhs and crores of data but if i'm taking a count if i'm getting a, if i'm getting the retrieve of the data two days later there is no use of me i can't increase my business for two days data business is gone upon that analytics i need to do some decisions everything is gone so storage is not only the problem processing is also a problem processing is nothing but taking account get in the point all of you clear right yes yep so storage and processing those two are very important factors so here my storage plays a vital role and processing plays a major vital role so data warehousing started failing at particular time at few cases data warehousing started started failing gone got it then the most important evolution happened in 1995 guys yes? now we are entering slowly into hadoop world okay we are slowly entering into hadoop world which is very important okay then this guy this so called guy which i whom i just mentioned duck cutting duck cutting has just uh, informed has just found something known as dfs 
BFS. BFS. Any idea what is full form of BFS? Distribution file system. Arup, sorry. Arup, Arup, can you please post your questions? Distribution file system. Yeah. Arup, please post your question. No, they are saying it's a distributed file system. Is it audible, sir? Is it Arup? Yeah, yeah, I understand what is no, this. No, this is Srikanth. Yeah, yeah, Srikanth. I understand. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. thank you. Harup, can you hear me? Harup, can you please respond? Hi, I am not able to understand actually. At which place you didn't understand, Harup? Uh, the, the structure of the architecture. Are you are uh, telling about right now. It will be too hard for me to understand. If it comes to any strong anything, you mean straight? You mean to say the data warehousing? Yes. Okay. Leave the data warehousing. Not a problem. Just imagine there are few problems in the data warehousing. Just concentrate with the DFS, which is something very important. If you don't understand, we'll repeat again. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Distributed file system. Yes. Mother of big data. Mother of big data. Okay. Without this DFS, big data should have not formed. Uh, see, it's not a failure. Why shall it? That is not a failure. Data warehousing is not a failure. Okay. Data warehousing is something is not suiting at particular times. It is highly, highly costly. High on costly. And first of all, I can achieve the same in SQL servers also, but I have to invest crores of money to buy those servers. Number one. Number two is retrieval. No open source frameworks exist. Right? Money factor also matters. If I'm if my revenue is 10 crores, if I'm spending 10 crores for the processing of the data, there won't be any profit. I should check which is high cost efficient. Then I should check which is complete open source. And again, I have to, I should not take much of time. Data warehousing, I have to take the legacy data, put it back and do the analytics. Data is not always available in data warehousing. Coming to a distributed file system, I'm telling you mother of big data, okay? Hadoop, I can say mother of Hadoop and big data. What is distributed file system? So this guy has originated DFS in 1995. In 1995, he found nothing but something known as DFS. What is DFS is, can anyone tell me, you have a laptop. You have a laptop. In front of you, just imagine you are sitting right. In front of you, you have one TB of laptop. You have one TB of laptop, just imagine. In that one TB of laptop, you are saving 750 MB, like uh, what I'm saying is, 750 GB of the data in one laptop. Getting it? Let's consider. Let me put it this way. I have one TB of data, okay? One TB of hard disk. I have one TB of data. Let's consider I have two TBs again. Another laptop. Laptop one with one TB. Okay. Now I got a chunk of 900 GB. I got a chunk of 900 GB. Okay, I got a chunk of 900 GB of data. Got it? So in this 900 GB of data, if I'm saving this data, entire chunk of data inside this one TB of data, I'm sending, I have two laptops with one TB and another one TB. I have 900 GB at the left. I'm, I'm just pushing the 900 GB of data into one hard disk of one TB, out of which few, few, uh, few data, okay? Another, another 124 GB is left, 124 GB is left out. Okay, this is, this is the left out part. This is the saved part, okay? This is saved part. Then again, I'm getting 
again i am getting another Five hundred MB, for example, five hundred GB, for example. Okay, I'm getting another five hundred GB. Now, when I this five hundred GB, what I what my condition is? Save the data, complete the data storage here, and go to this hard disk. Go to this laptop. Fill it first here. Then, when this data is trying to move to this particular hard disk, first chunk of data. Okay, I mean to say. This try this data is trying to fit in with this data, this space. This laptop will not respond that fast because it is already facing a hectic memory storage. Data is getting filled. As your laptop is keep on getting filled, you will face a lot of issues with the storage. Yes or no? Yes or no, guys? Your laptop will start. I uh, stop your uh, storage. It will say you please note it down. Please don't put. It will respond slowly. It will not immediately accept any data. Yes or no? Agreed or not? Yes. 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 Yep. So, by putting the dumping the entire data here is a very bad idea. So, what they have told is, what they have told is, first of all, what DFS has told is, you don't worry about, don't dump it into a, don't dump it into a single place. What we have to do is, sick. Install you if you have first in 900 GB, divide some data here, divide some data here, and divide the remaining data here. When the next data comes, okay, divide it again. At least the storage issue will be resolved. Yes or no? At least laptops will be will be will be responding back immediately it will add immediately lacks of the storage etc etc yes or no guys getting the point somehow both will be filled off agreed but at least this hectic situation saving into one laptop then going into other laptop then fill it then going to other laptop fill it then going to other laptop fill it instead of dumping the entire data into different laptops first have the storage divide the data and store it that will give me at least a storage problems can be resolved in making the laptops free, respond with high power. Agreed or not, all of you? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So that can be this. This is nothing but DFS. Please write it down. Distribute file system. Here, what I'll do is how the frameworks works is here where my DFS is installed, guys. These two laptops, I installed DFS, DFS framework. That's a framework, that's just a software. DFS is also a software, okay? I'll install in both the laptops. No, these laptops are interlinked. Okay, what DFS will do is, if I install DFS in both the laptops, okay, but any installation has to do, okay, this installation, but very important to understand, installation will not happen automatically. There should be a person who have to do the installation. Another node, okay. Another node have to work on it. That's a different story. I'll come to that. If DFS is installed day here, once, once I'm trying to send the data, once I'm trying to send this data, automatically this will be chunked automatically automatically it's not necessary for us to do any process to do this distribution automatically if i'm pushing any data to the dfs installation that will be divided that's what the dfs framework is all about getting the point all of you yes yeah but but the most important, what are the two things I just mentioned with respect to data? What is the two, two major things? The storage storage and process. processing. Storage and processing, right? In this storage and processing, okay, see, with respect to any cluster you go, okay? With respect to any cluster, like interconnected cluster like this, this is two node cluster, okay? Any node which is connected, which is connected, See, have a look, which is interlinked, 
okay that need a person at the door let's say for example you're sitting in a room right on the in the next in the next room you have two two nodes two nodes that means two one two laptops are sitting inside that room but when you're trying to push the data inside that room you can't directly go and push the data into that room one person will be standing at the door one person will be standing at the door who is nothing but the gateway node any distribution there will be a gateway node in hadoop terms the name differs i'll come to that gateway that's a gateway node getting the point this is also a laptop one laptop please note it down any distribution which are interlinked to communicate the distribution i can't directly go and sit with them i have to sit with the gateway node he will do all the services for me to push the data to push the data i have to give it to gateway node first i have to give it to gateway node first then he will try to push it here and here so gateway node is something very important first thing okay once he got gateway node we got the gateway node please mute yourself if you don't anything to speak please thank you data or got and i have sent data got removed because data is already sent to i can remove this data data is already sent to distributed file system guys this is something very important for you to understand very important for you to understand now we are now we are going to explain about one of the major issues faced in dfs how big data resolve that issue big data resolve the issue faced by dfs so have a look have a look guys next 5 minutes is highly important okay in this 100 gb of data i have male and female records for example male and female records for example getting it so when i divide this data both will have male and female records agreed this will have male this will have more female male and female obviously obviously i have male and female here i have male and female here right so now storage is done fine storage awesome dfs work like anything highly successful well but right now right now i need to perform i need to perform an operation in c this is perfect storage perfect dfs help me but coming to process okay coming to process process is nothing but filtering main records process it's a process right filtering main records right now when i once i want to process any filtering of main records these two data will come back to gateway node to get processed to get processed these two data will come to come and sit with gateway node now the process starts now the process starts male and female records very big very big from the start it will go from the start it will it will start filtering the data slowly till the end like this like this now tell me now tell me this is a most important question do dfs has provided a good solution for processing somehow i'll dump the data in db sql db i'll provide the data on top of entire data the same what dfs is doing yes or no agreed guys getting this point yes yes see what is the main issue with the process i have 900 gb of data and i'm processing it it will take a lot of time in sql for example yes still again if i go with the dfs it will get back me the data to the gateway node and apply the process again the process is applying for 900 gb even in sql 900 gb is getting processed even in dfs 900 gb is processed storage yes perfect it gave a very good solution for storage but for processing it is again trying to get through the data to the place 
getting it all of you this is something known as okay please note it down here i trigger my process trigger my process here filtering of mail records immediately these data will come this data will come these two data will come and trigger get processed so my data is moving towards the process my data is moving towards the process please note it down my data is moving towards the process please note it down even though the data got distributed in the cluster to process something if i'm triggering some process in a node my data is moving towards that node to get processed getting the point all of you yes yes this process is known as process locality please note it down process locality process locality is nothing but process location where process is taking care where process is getting placed whether in the data side or process side i have the data here i have the process getting triggered data is moving towards process where the process is getting triggered guys any questions please post it now not a problem always welcome i have a cluster data distributed i have a gateway node once i trigger my process the data is coming to the place where my process is running to get processed to filter mail records again the process starts on top of this 900 gb again there won't be any change so literally literally dfs got failed in processing it didn't pro provide a solution for processing it provide a very good solution for storage yes sir yeah one one quick question like uh, i understand the drawback of dfs is to process it we have to bring to the uh, processing node from yes. the storage node yes but uh, what i'm asking is like uh, while storing is there any kind of uh, transformation or filtering was possible in the dfs like as you said male and female just go yeah. male to the first storage and female to the second storage that processing was there while storing no 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 it is not possible because that actually depends on the size not the type okay so it's not at all able to process anything it will just divide it or chunk it and then place it at a different storage location exactly perfect Perfect. Oh, Just so no processing at the time of storage. Not at all. Not at all. That okay. actually automate that automatically chunks it automatically and places it few with few criteria. Criteria is not processing. It is just considered size. Okay, chunk it, chunk it, place it. Simple. Okay, no process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, anyone oh, want to add anything? Yeah. 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 Uh, is a gateway node is a address kind of thing or uh, it is a storage place? Where is what is it? Gateway node. Yes, yes. See, gateway node is nothing but okay. I told DFS installed, right? Right? Who installed DFS? Yes. This gateway node. Who is sending the data? Gateway node. Who is retrieving the data? Gateway node. Who is triggering the process? Gateway node. Everyone. That's nothing but a Linux gateway node. Okay. see yeah sir you might be knowing lecture like, since you are from eta background you have the usually connect to one host right through linux right yeah that is nothing but the gateway node through that i install things in the cluster mm -hmm. okay you getting then it then what is process locality okay process locality in the sense this gateway node if i'm processing see the data still present i want to filter mail records okay so let me let me put it again see i have my gateway node and i have my dfs installed two nodes i have the data here i have the data here now this is interlink this is gateway now i trigger my process then what happens these two data these two data from these two data data will migrate here with here to get processed 
data will not be removed here but data will get processed here this data will move here to a node and get processed so here my process is triggered here my data is present who is moving towards what data is moving towards process getting it chiranjeevi yes yes sir yes data is moving towards process here i have my process simple here i have my process here i have my data so to get it processed dfs has not provided any solution it has provided just for the storage how there has coined is dfs told trigger any process that data will move towards that process getting it once you trigger the process data will be moved towards that process make you clear chiru chiranjeevi uh, yes i i got yeah. it thank you yeah sure thank you so i'm just repeating again the reason is i am not satisfied so just give me one sec okay guys i'm i'm i i'll give up another 2 minutes i'll give a very layman example okay very layman example okay i'll take very small data 256 mb of data just consider just 256 mb of data please mute yourself if you don't anything to speak please male and female okay so guys i'm repeating again just that i'm in a dilemma whether you have understood let's see to make it a bit clear i have two 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 to mb of data right i have one gateway node i have dfs i have two nodes for example okay what happens now i need to send this data what happens one chunk will be stored here another chunk will be stored here okay so both has male and female records vikesh will come to that vikesh he'll come to that i'll come to that yeah okay both has male and female okay both has male and female now i want to filter male records what happens this is process locality these are interlinked so you know what happens data will move to the process to get processed again here here i have stored 128 mb here i have stored 128 mb for example okay let's consider 128 mb say for example what 256 mb which almost equal to 256 lines also for example 256 lines which is hard, which is rare but just consider i have 256 lines with more male both male and female records data is like this sai 40 male uh, lakshana uh, female 70 like that it has 256 lines so the data will be moved here this data will be moved here finally this chunk of data will be available in my gateway node and this n my process starts with first line to 250 to 256 line yes sir no agreed all of you filtering of mail record starts with first line to 256 line every data got moved here getting it now am i make you clear yes yes sir sai i have a doubt sai yeah uh we are storing processing data or we are storing actual data see i got 256 mb i chunked it i dumped it already first i dumped it okay. already without any change because okay. today i may filter male tomorrow i may filter i may filter female whatever i need the raw data right today i'll trigger yeah. for male. tomorrow i'll trigger for female tomorrow i'll trigger for something else okay i need the raw data to store okay what is analytics i need the raw data on top of it i need to do the analysis right yeah i got a chunk of 256 i divided it today i triggered mail record filter and again if we done processing and again we will store into dfs sai i have to store it back i have to store it up i may store it or may not store it that's a different story getting it i'll okay. i'll come to that okay. Say for example i got this data here chunk here 
and i done some okay. process and finally got the results with some mail records getting it filter okay. records i may filter into dfs or i may send to other systems whatever but process got triggered getting it right only for mail records the data got moved towards get fino clear yeah i'll come to that distribution storage i'll come to that we have lots to discuss i'll come to that after after processing it what is it i'll come to that okay okay yeah everyone is clear so far the biggest advantage with dfs is storage the biggest disadvantage for dfs is processing because again to process the data i have to bring back the entire data getting it all of you getting it all of you any questions here please confirm i say we have a doubt here yeah yeah there should be a synchronized right that's a payment gateway as well as that uh, you know dfs file system that are interlinked actually i'm saying see dfs got installed through gateway only you can't directly touch these nodes okay i told you right those two nodes are sitting in the next room there is one person standing at the door i have to communicate only to the person in the door not to inside this laptops getting it yeah 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 those two laptops is maintained by this person only he is kind of a gateway mm. making you clear yes yes just like hr guys just like hr to there are employees two 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 employees are sitting in the next room if you want to communicate i am completely other company if i am communicate with them i need to i need to speak with hr please provide me a contact i need to speak then hr will provide information like that we get in the point right right Kind yeah of. yeah so now we are entering so finally storage has given processing it has not given a proper solution then this guy completely dropped the this guy completely dropped the idea because even the storage has provided solution my processing is still a hindrance he completely dropped an idea of developing this dfs right and he he is he kept on for eight years he kept calm for eight years he didn't touch this framework again 1995 he kept calm from in 1995 he found it and found dfs is not much usage even though it provide a good solution for storage processing has gone he kept quiet he should he should have kept quiet but he didn't later exactly in 2003 Exactly. So, sir, can you confirm that in a nutshell, this gateway's uh, activities like installation of uh, nodes, installation, DFS, installation, as well as that triggering the event, right? Uh, installation, putting, getting, triggering, whatever. That's the gateway. Okay. So these have no don't have any storage activity, right? Like they have just uh, triggering it has, those. It has. It has. It has. right it has it's a just a laptop another laptop okay so if if we we don't have the gateway what is the problem is there any alternate solution for that if we don't have the gateway see okay what i'm saying is to okay see this gateway is the first to install before going this this is not possible without this first you have to set up this if you are setting okay. up this this becomes a gateway you getting it right first yeah. set up your gateway then from gateway you have to install the cluster you have to access the cluster okay so this is the means uh, minimum criteria first the primary step. thing you have to first do. step the very first step okay i can't go bit i can't go bit deeper yeah if i start with very deeper you in a single day i can't explain everything very bigger concept it is It's like in other words, uh, yes, I we can say that it's a master uh, slave architecture. No, 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 no. Don't, can't be act. don't get confused. Okay. This is not a master slave. Okay. Gateway is not a master. That's why I didn't mention that term. I'll come to master okay. slave. Okay. This is a gateway. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, most important part right now. Okay. With this guy, okay, in two thousand five, nineteen ninety five. 
we got 1995 we got dfs and shawl 2003 there comes the matter there comes the main important factor everyone was puzzled okay data storage data processing was the biggest problem google finally google is there right this so called guy again another so called guy this guy came guys he just released one open paper gfs google file system google file system in 2003 gfs released a google file system he he showed the storage mechanism he is following he sold that paper in the industry he sold that paper in the industry this guy who is that guy founder of this guy dr ting he took that paper in 2003 he took that paper in 2003 and he found there is no much difference between gfs and dfs very little differences in case of code or differences mechanism no much change did no much change it's almost similar in case of storage okay when the data is sent that get distributed in different cluster the same concept no change and again he took the dfs framework out right he took the dfs framework out and he checked the change everything clear but he sharpened it that year in 2004 he sharpened dfs and named as ndfs he just sharpened a dfs and renamed as ndfs with respect to google file system in 2004 in the same year of 2004 a biggest revolution happened google released its processing mechanism first google released the storage mechanism then google released its processing mechanism in 2004 in the same year after 2003 okay this guy took the paper he just took the paper again the cutting took the paper back and he literally shocked to see that paper he got shocked to see that paper and he he then he came to know what gfs is following a concept and mechanism known as map reduce the name which you should have heard for many times especially few people yes or no anybody heard about this yeah. word yeah. yeah yes yes so yes yes map reduce see storage mechanism is nothing but distributed storage can i say distributed storage right distributed storage he follow something known as distributed storage but this map reduce he literally got shocked by looking at google's paper because google is not only doing a distributed storage google also following distributed processing please note it down google not only doing a distributed storage google also performing distributed processing which is known as map reduce please note it down that we can i can explain what is map reduces in a very high level map reduce okay shall we go ahead explaining map reduce all good yes yep yeah yes so let me remove this let me put the same architecture and i'll tell you what is distributed processing okay let's say i have two pieces mb of data as usual
yeah to this mb of data gateway node gateway node okay let's consider guys please mute yourself if you have don't anything to speak please it is interrupting others thank you so i have two nodes connected i have two nodes connected dfs let's consider dfs okay both are same gfs and dfs are same now i am explaining gfs now okay what google is doing this is gateway as usual no change this is node one this is node two guys please please concentrate immediately not it will not understand immediately so please concentrate okay okay so we got this data once once i push this data this gets divided into 128 chunk this gets divided into 128 chunk well and good i need to filter mail records can anyone tell me can anyone tell me what is process locality before what happened to filter mail records what happens what is dfs what happens once i trigger trigger mail yeah, records what usually happens here say for example 256 mb is nothing but 256 lines for example lines 256 mb for example both has mail and email both has male and female for example okay now when once i want to filter mail records these two data will come again i'll get 256 mb of lines that's how it happens here i have 128 mb here i have 128 mb one so what happens you know once i trigger the process once i trigger the process in distributed processing process gets distributed and the process will go towards the data data will not come to the process i mean to say where the process is there data will not come where the data is there process will go process gets distributed and reaches to the individual nodes where the data exist getting it all of you the data process is moving towards the data process is moving towards the data data is not moving towards the process process is moving towards the data when the 128 mb process this 128 mb process starts simultaneously 128 mb process starts here also i mean to say here i will be having 1 to 128 mb lines 128 lines here i'll be having 129 to 256 lines right when the process starts at the first line here in this node pro like particularly the process starts for 129th line when the process ends up with to 128th line the process ends up at 256 lines simultaneously that filter records in this node is saved here and that filter records in this node will be saved here for example this node is saved here this node is saved here this is a result of this 1 to 128 lines mail records this is 129 to 256 lines mail records got filtered is everyone clear with this yeah yes sir yes yes any questions here no so the result of this mail records is this this result of mail records is this this is nothing but mapping phase mapping phase map process reaching to the nodes and get processed is nothing but mapping map sure sure satish see 
initially i have this data right i have this 1 to 1 120 I have this 1 to 1, 1 to 128 line. I have 129 to 256 lines here. Out of these 256 lines, right? So, Ramji, can you please mute yourself? If you don't have anything to speak right now. Thank you. So, 128, 1 to 128 line, 129 to 256 line. Okay. Once it trigger a process, filter mail records. That process will, that process will reach here. This process will reach here then this will trigger this will trigger and then the process starts with first line at the same time the process starts at 129th line because the process is already distributed the process completes at 128th line filter process the process at the same time process gets completed in 256th line this process result might have come up with some mail records because i just filtered right this filter might have given with some mail records right finally i have got mail and mail records this phase is nothing but map phase i'm making you clear all of you so far good right so far good all of you Yes, Adhya. Yes. One more important yes, thing. This process, the process, see, process come, data comes to processes, process locality. Process goes to data is nothing but data locality. At the data location, the process happens. Okay. Uh, I think, can you say that again, actually? Okay. See, the process goes to data, right? So data goes to process, right? Here. Before before one, the data goes to process. That is process locality. Here, data process goes to data. Nothing but data locality. Guys, do my voice is breaking? No, no, no. no. It's okay. it's fine now. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So data locality. This is nothing but map, guys. Process reaching to the node is nothing but map. Well and good, awesome map is fine. But individual mail records, individual mail records. This has to get consolidated to give me a full mail records. Yes or no? Agreed? Agreed or not? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. This particular chunk might go here, or this particular chunk might go here to get consolidated. Say, for example, this mode here so once it got moved this chunk will be available in this node this is nothing but final mail records agreed all of you yes sir this phase this data movement processed data movement the data has moved from here to here right this data movement is nothing but reduce reduced reduce is nothing but in a very layman words consolidation of processed results consolidation of processed results please note it down making you clear all of you finally i got my mail records which I have achieved through distributed processing. Yes or no? Ayatya, uh, is there any specific reason that you put uh, one node of results into another node? I no, mean, no, that depends. That few, few yeah. criteria, it will move automatically. 
I'll okay. talk about the architecture. I'll explain during the architecture part. Who, who decides? Yeah. Wait a moment. So mapping. So this, I'll just give a very high level. Okay. Before traditional DFS, data will be distributed. Process gets triggered in gateway. The data will move towards gateway. In case of my big data, Hadoop framework. Sorry, GFS. The data data will be the process will be moving towards the data. and that is nothing but mapping phase and the data will be processed in the individual nodes one more important one more very important point to be noted here is i am not using one node's capacity here i have to use one node's capacity this node should be highly powerful good ram good hard disk everything but here it's not needed one node is not doing it multiple nodes are doing it right it will this process which is mapping here it will use its own capacity dividing the capacity is also getting divided because since you is using different nodes it will use its ram it need a ram to process right so instead of having one giving burden to one node the no, burden will be divided into two different nodes this is how gfs has been coined and that's how it got designed gfs this guy this again this so called guy the cutting took the distributed processing in the year of 2005 he just enhanced a few more and then finally told i have achieved map produce for ndfs that mean he made his own ndfs notch distributed file system this is not nothing but notch distributed file system and in same year he joined for map produce Finally, in two thousand five, he told, "My, I have made my uh, framework ready, which I thought of achieving for having large data data sets. I can achieve distributed storage, distributed processing. If tomorrow, if someone ask and come, come and ask you the question, okay, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Okay. So, map reduce for NDFS. So, finally, he didn't like the name known as Nutch because he already having a Nutch framework. It's a different Nutch is for other frameworks. He thought of coining this name." he thought of coining this name i don't want nudge but he is trying to get the name of this framework i have some distributed file system i have some distributed storage now he want to coin some name to this finally he finally he is just thinking he is just thinking for uh, some name and finally he is just sitting in a room and thinking to coin some name he son just entered into his room and asked where is my hadoop he just asked where is my hadoop hadoop is nothing but his child's elephant name doll elephant doll name then immediately he coined okay let's coin this framework as hadoop hadoop then he coined hdfs this is hdfs this is map reduce combined to from a combined to create a framework known as hadoop hadoop is nothing but distributed storage and distributor processing distributor storage is nothing but hdfs distributor processing is nothing but map reduce this is how hadoop came into market i'm making you clear now this yes, map reduce is introduced in his framework and coined it as hdfs and map reduce and he gave a framework known as hadoop which includes hdfs and map reduce that's why we talk about hdfs map reduce hdfs map reduce i'm not going bit deeper guys hd itself hdfs i take it for 7 to 8 hours hdfs alone map reduce for the map reduce and yan i can take it for hours because map reduce will be traveling with me when i'm handling the, in, in my course almost i'll handle this map this high map reduce everything for almost 15 hours 15 to 16 hours only high so it's a very big concept but i'm just giving a very layman status very layman information very high level yes I know Hadoop one, I know Hadoop two, I know Hadoop three. Difference is also. 
yeah uh, what is the difference in hadoop 3 to c i need some uh, uh, it's a very big very very big explanation actually uh, i'll just given a i'll just show you the pics okay uh, i didn't have yeah, the pics. because in my environment we are using hadoop 2 only but uh, somebody is asking hadoop 3 clusters hadoop 3 clusters so, have a high security high high end security hadoop 2 and 3 is almost same 2 and 3 okay. one, is, one is something different this is one this is one architecture okay this is two this is two architecture three is something different we'll have some security uh cons and we also got some other nodes it, it has sharp on nfs gateway etc different story again there Uh, in hadoop 3 we store same three replications or not see replication is same always uh, see rep- by default it will be three and even in uh, three uh, hadoop 3 is also three replication can be changed at any time for a file i can change replication but file yeah, that is for uh, i hear uh, from outside uh, from hadoop 3 there is some different algorithm so we don't need to save the replication tree See here, Hadoop 3.0 by default it's three again. That can't be changed. But the storage of replication they are using another mechanism. How the replication happens? They are following in a different mechanism, not like one or two. Getting it right? Replication is the same, but how it is happening is a different story. Yeah. Okay. If you are not able to explain right now, because what I'm panicking is, I'm just getting panic. If I start to explain that, people yeah. get confused. So, <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why. And uh, I will ping you separately for the three. Sure. 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 Yeah. So that's how it happens, guys. Everyone is clear with the basic information of Hadoop. This how the evolution of data happened. Clear, all of you. any questions yes. here shall move it forward yes sir it's very clear yeah um, at least my sir i am very much clear thank you yes, for that detailed information yeah you can take it forward my pleasure shrikant my pleasure sure so we just going forward okay i just give a break in another 5 minutes before that you need to understand something very important okay see type of data sources in our day to day life i just include only few in our day to day life like we have oltp data we have human generated data we have machine generated data oltp is the data which present in our sql dbs human generated we put emails we create documents notepad and we create social networking data that is human generated machine generated cctv mic sensor satellite even without any intentions of humans that will keep on creating the data it keep on capturing the data and provide the data i'm just data sources as a point i thought of mentioning it here five ways of big data please hold on this i don't want to give such a very big detail on this please hold this for now okay till now we have spoke about introduction can you if now coming to the point if anyone ask you what is big data tell me big data in single sentence or tell me hadoop in single sentence simply say distributed storage distributed processing and leave the place that's it only one definition distributed storage and distributed processing clear evolution we just discussed how it got evolved this all this slide is already completed futures discuss further map reduce is already one of the futures going forward we will discuss good to go further just 5 minutes we'll have a break i just need to com- complete one more thing how the cluster setup is created okay in hadoop after that we'll have a break in another 5 minutes we'll complete that yeah how hadoop cluster is created okay yeah you know need break break right now or is it fine to have break after 5 minutes feeling exhausted Yeah, five five minutes is fine. Five yeah, minutes. sure. Just just this, um, just very few information. Okay. Yes, I have I have one node cluster with me. Two TB data, three TB hard disk, 
four TB hard disk and five TB hard disk I have with me. I totally have five TB hard disks with me, separate separately. Okay. I install Hadoop in each of the cluster. Okay, each of the cluster. Once I interlink, that becomes HDFS file system of five TB. This is no way you tell us five node, individual five nodes. No, it's a single HDFS file system with five TB capacity. I'm just giving any very, very layman understanding. Very layman understanding. Clear, right? Five TB. But this installation will not happen automatically. I need something. I told you, right? In gateway node. In Hadoop, we call it as edge node. Edge node. Through edge node, I have to communicate with my cluster. This five node is sitting in the next room. This guy is sitting in the standing at the door. Whatever I have to go there, I have to I have to contact this person in the door. I can't go inside. He will serve me. Clear so far? Ram, can you yeah, yeah. So once it is done, okay, once this is Hadoop edge node is created. So once going ahead, this edge node will have Linux file system. So any data you want to handle it edge node, you have Linux file system. Any data you have in this Hadoop, you want to access that, you need to use Hadoop file system commands. Here you have Linux file system. Here you have Hadoop file system. This slide is clear. All of you? Yes. 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 Guys, please stop me if, if I, in case of any doubts. Your silence will make me assume okay your understanding. So please stop me in case of any issues. So, <clears throat> yeah, Gayatri, edge node is nothing but a gateway node. I told you, right? Any cluster you have, you need a gateway node, right? To communicate to this cluster, I have a gateway node, which is nothing but my edge node here. Same. How to connect to this edge node? How to connect to this edge node? Okay. Through putty or some remote server softwares. Popular is putty. I'll connect to this node through putty to this edge node to access. Clear all of you so far? I hear edge node means uh, it comes under name node or data node? No, 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 don't confuse. I didn't start that at all. I'll come to that. Okay. I'll come to that. Just consider this as an edge node. That's it. Okay. Edge node is a gateway node. I just okay. speaking about a person standing at the door. I didn't start speaking about the about the laptop sitting inside the room. I didn't touch that at all. That you that your terms comes into picture. I'm just talking about the person standing at the door. Okay. Uh, I check in essay, uh, this edge nodes, uh, this edge node is nothing but a uh, Linux environment. On top of that, my Hadoop is got installed. Perfect. What can I uh, anticipate in that? Yeah, exactly. Any okay. changes, even Hadoop installation is done through this edge node. First, this edge node have to kept with us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So once this edge node is cleared, so once it got installed, I have to connect this edge node through putty. That's it. So from this place of one TB of hard disk, I can make my data cluster ready for me. Now, you know what we're gonna do? The beauty today is we're gonna create a cluster in Azure cloud. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you edge node, name node, data node, secondary name node, everything. For you first to understand that, Sorry. Hi, yeah. One question. Can I ask? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. One question actually. Uh, when we create the cluster, Hadoop cluster, the edge node automatically create or we need to install different yeah. tools to the file system? Or if we create automatically? 
first we need to make the edge node ready to make cluster setup getting it right see if you are installing i told you i told you install hadoop how the hadoop got installed who installed hadoop no individual so they are interlinked so edge node through edge node i have installed hadoop in that getting it first edge node is the first criteria oh. for us to create clear right ranjit yeah yeah okay thank ranjit. you ranjit is this ranjit who attended my spark yeah, shooting yeah. workshop no 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 okay sorry Ajay. i thought of same ranjit patil one person attended before okay Sai, uh, which distributed file system you are installing? Cloudera or Hortonworx? Here in Azure, I am installing Hortonworx. Hortonworx? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, in this edge node, I connect to this putty and then I can access it. Okay, I already have one cluster ready. Okay, I just created one cluster in Azure. Just uh, one sec. I just create a one one node in Kazur. You don't panic. What is this all is? Okay, please don't panic. At the end, we'll be creating again. I thought of showing just a kind of cluster how to connect. Okay. This is the. I go through putty. I go through putty. This is putty, okay. How to connect to this edge node? I should have host name or IP address. I should have host name of this edge node or IP address so that I can connect from putty, I can connect to this node. Please check your surroundings before unmuting. I can't concentrate on that much since I'm just busy in explaining things. Thank you. Host name. Here, here is the host name. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. So I just have to give the host name here, which I just created as a Hadoop cluster. Uh, what is the password? Okay, let me connect other cluster. Okay, I have a host name of one cluster. I can directly give that host name here. user ID for that edge node, password to that edge node, got connected. I connected to that edge node. What is edge node? What happens there? What can I do here? That's a very big story. You don't worry about things. Just see, okay, through Putti, he logged into edge node. What I can do here? What do exist here? I'll explain it later. Just consider, okay, through edge node, I got, a, I got a host name. From that host name, I connected to the edge node by giving the user ID password. Clear all of you? Uh, Sai, can you please explain that uh, how we connect with the Putty uh, once more, please? Sure, see, show no issues. See, I have, I have host name, okay? I have IP address or a host name. Host name or IP address, can you see that? Yes, sir. This edge node should have IP address, public IP, or it has been coined with the host name, right? Right. The host name which I have is e.cloudxlab.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is a host name for edge node which I bought it. I'm having a cluster, real time cluster. This is the host name I have. Mm -hmm. Connecting to, I just open it. It was asking me login, right? Right. Achieve Sai 863, sorry. This is the password. I logged in. Getting it? Yeah. This is Hadoop cluster. I have another class cloud also, another cluster of cloud error, which is IP addresses 192.168.159.128. This this was the configuration I provide to the session session people. Okay. Uh, one second. Yeah. Sri, Sri, Sai Krishna, can you please mute yourself? Please. Sai Krishna. Please, I can't concentrate on all this, please. 
Otherwise, I should mute everyone. See, I got another IP. I'll just give the IP here and open. Now I'm in that cloud cluster. Clear right now, Ashutosh? Yeah, clear. Thank you. Yeah. That's how I connect to the cluster. Okay, guys, we just started. We just started very basics of big data. We just completed 5% of the workshop. Okay. See, after the break, right now, we're going to see a sample architecture of big data. Later, we're going to start with HDFS today. After this HDFS, we're going to see very layman explanation of HDFS. As I told you, I can handle it for eight, seven to eight hours. I'm going to handle it for only 20 minutes, very high level of HDFS. Then, after explaining HDFS, I'll create a clustering nozzle. I'll create a clustering nozzle, Hadoop cluster. Then I'll show you, then we'll leave the day. Fine, all of you? Yeah, fine. So guys, please don't go out of the meeting. Most important thing is, in the break, please don't go out of the meeting. The reason is, if you leave, you can't join back at times. You have to find another device, and you can't give it the same name. There are so many issues if you leave the meeting. So because because this is a public meeting, so that's the reason I have I have I have no option. I have to give that I have to check that option. If you leave the sometimes you can't able to join back the meeting. The the time is 17. Please meet back by 11:22. We'll continue explaining simple architecture, HDFS, and Hadoop creation clustering Azure. Please don't go to the meeting. Please consider this. Thank you. Meet sure. you back in five minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Payal, can you hear me? Yes, I did. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I can. Okay. Just give me one minute. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead, guys. <clears throat> Very simple simple architecture which we're gonna do completely hands-on tomorrow tomorrow we're gonna sit completely with hands-on no theory part at all we're gonna cover linux commands hadoop commands scoop and hive processing in hive how in a very high level not exactly very deeper very high level how much your understanding will go ahead okay so coming to very simple architecture okay not sure how many people will say etl or whatever okay with respect to data, very simple architecture is get the data, process the data, put the results in somewhere. Get the data, process the data, put the data somewhere else. That's my ultimate goal in any data processing, right? This session might last for another 40 minutes. We'll wind up by 12, 5 or 12, 4, 12 10 for sure. Just, just see this, everything. Uh, meanwhile, we'll go ahead and uh, accessing things discuss it a bit further in case of cluster administration hadoop everything we have bit of important knowledge we do have so coming to different simple language this i just created in paint to make you understand very easily okay i just explained this in paint so this is just to get the data do the process put the data consider i have a hadoop cluster okay consider let me remove this everything Okay, consider I have a lot of data. Okay, let me take a very real example. You know that Amazon, Amazon company, I, every year, every year, it provides a, uh, what I can say, it provides a special offers for top 100 customers every year. You know that? Top 100 customers, they provide a lot of uh, kind of, offers gift cards gift coupons not sure how many of you are aware of it entire the globe not only towards specific india or us or uk in the entire globe uh amazon will provide special gift vouchers in the entire for top 100 customers but how the top 100 customers are analyzed this can be us data this can be uk data which present in say for example we have it in rtbms uk Canada and India. It has a different RTBMS data, US RTBMS, UK RTBMS, Canada RTBMS, Indian RTBMS, in which consists of all Indian data, Indian, uh, all, all of the globe purchase data, who purchased a lot. He can't able to move this data here and here in different servers to do analysis to, to know top 100 customers. He can't do that. And the data is so huge. For that, you know, Say, say, for example, I have a Hadoop cluster with 5 node or 4 node. Biggest Hadoop cluster with 5 node cluster, for example. Okay. He moved this entire data to the he moved this entire data to the Hadoop cluster. Then do the analytics. For now, I'm just removing it. I know do the process okay once you do the process once you do the process find top 100 customers 
find the top 100 customers entire the globe okay once the data got moved okay the data has been moved to hadoop cluster very big hadoop cluster top 100 customers are found but to move this data from rdbms we have different tools okay this is at the rdbms right we have the popular tool known as scoop sometimes sql loader sometimes you can use nifi also it's also very advanced very advanced technology nifi I'm not sure how many people heard about it nifi few might be heard about it nifi which is actually good in the market in the upcoming market scoop after finding the top 100 customers let's say i have processed the data this is a processed data okay this is a process data once i find the top 100 customers i have to place it in one rdbms table i have to place it in one rdbms table finally i have the results here getting the point i got the data processed the data put the results somewhere else getting the point all of you very high level so this might be a different story in each cases but very high level if you are becoming a data engineer maybe in future for those who are not from big data if you are going from the data big data engineers just ask one question tell me the source tell me the destination to process the data simple tell me the source tell me the destination to process the data clear right all of you Shall we go yes, further? Sir. Sure. Yes. So similarly, the source can be an RDBMS or a Teradata or other file systems, other Linux file system, other servers, real-time streaming data, maybe Kafka, maybe Spa, maybe another producers like Nifi, whatever. Streaming data processing. The data will reach Hadoop, get processed, and we can put the data in other DBs if needed. Getting it right, all of you. So who can process this data here? I can use MR code, MapReduce code framework. I can use Hive, Pick, or Spark. I can process this data, which is present in my HDFS to process it further. Very simple architecture of Hadoop. I'm just explaining very simple architecture of Hadoop to make it a bit simple. All good? Understood all of you? Shall we go ahead with HDFS architecture? Yep. Yeah. Coming to HDFS architecture, okay. Guys, let me tell you something, okay. Very in very in day to day life, okay. We work in an MNC. We work in one of the MNCs or whatever. We work in a company. So, for example, service based company. In a service based company, I work in a, one of the service based companies of MNC. So. I have a reporting manager. I have a reporting manager. I have a client. That client gave work for my company which I'm working in. Right? That client, that particular client is nothing but he is, we have to obey him because he is the one who is giving work. We have to obey him. He has to give the work to us. But the client can't directly reach me. He wants to give the work to me. Client can't easily reach immediately. First, he'll reach my manager. Yes, sir. My manager will decide who is the right person to give this work. Then my manager will select, okay, Sai is the right person who you can give the work. Then client will directly come and contact me. Understood this scenario, all of you. Client has a work. He wants to give it to me. I have a reporting manager. First, he'll contact reporting manager. Dear reporting manager, tell me to whom I should give this work. Then according to few criteria, thinking about it, my reporting manager will give the work. Right? Reporting manager will not do any of the work. Please note it down. Reporting manager will not do the work. He, he will just guide the work. He or she will just guide the work, most probably. He will just guide the work. He will just know who is the right person to do that work. He or she most probably will not do the work. In this case, he will not do any of the work. In this case, he will just know who is the right person, who is free 
to work this who is highly burdened who is free who can take up that work only that information the manager will have then client will contact directly to the team myself and my team and we do the work and provide the information but after doing the work i have to keep on reporting to my manager dear manager i got this work because he is my reporting manager i got this work and i gave this work etc etc you understood this criteria right here in a very simple status here client is nothing but edge node who gives the work man reporting manager name node reporting manager is name node team data node getting it all of you uh, making you clear yeah, yes sir now now someone asked me a question right what is this edge node what is that master slave i am making you clear now here he is a client to this architecture he is master name node is a master these are slaves as usual team members in other words right so say for example okay just note it down very high level i can't go very deep in this architecture because it may take around hours for me to explain this but in very high level i'll just explain he is the he is the client right his work is to just put the data and get the data in case of storage put the data get the data work for client in case of storage is put the data and get the data right that's what the client will do reporting manager what manager usually do in team he will do the administration okay i'll tell you into real time example i'll tell you administration and metadata management i'll i'll tell you in a real time scenario okay yes saif any question saif guys can please hide your videos please please do not make me to say this again and again i can i don't have such power okay i don't have privilege to stop your videos so please if anyone is getting interrupted please minimize that hide the thumbnail video even though the video is on you can't see that just hide that at the top please hide that at the top okay if anyone is feeling the same please hide that right thumb line the left option okay okay so the work of this reporting what usually the reporting manager will do but i'm going a bit deeper right now okay now i just told you the work of edge node now i'll tell of, i'll say the work of the name node later on i'll say the work of data node what this name node usually do then 10 minutes i'll explain this guys i'll wind it up later on we'll i'll show you the how to azure cluster and we'll we'll go forward okay administration two things two things okay reporting manager not only assign the work to the team in case of in case of any escalation he or she has to manage he not only assign the work yes or no he also handle the escalations the same escalation handling is nothing but the administration here to whom the work has to get assigned is nothing but metadata management making you clear all of you is this making you clear yep yep yeah great so going forward okay now what usually happens if 
this client wants to put some data say for example i have a data i have a data okay i have a data right now first client will have client will have the data with it okay the data is 128 256 mb data 256 mb data okay 256 mb that's kept the size of the data is 256 mb guys this is important for you to understand this is a flow so till the end continue the flow because you may get interrupted in between so don't get interrupted stay till the end of the flow okay i have 256 mb of data in this 250 mb of data i want to put in this cluster i want to put in this cluster what i am having this five node say simply in very layman status this five node people are sitting in the next room the one who standing at the door is 250 mb i just went and gave to this guy sitting at the door client please have this 250 mb now this client this edge node immediately contacts the manager name node dear manager i have a data to whom i should give this for the storage first he'll contact name node then name node will reply back dear data node the dear dear edge node data node one and data node two is free data node one and data node two is free for this four data nodes data node one and two is free okay so that time this data node immediately this particular edge node will go and put the data in this chunk as a part files like one 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 twenty mb here another one twenty mb here it divides which is nothing but my which is nothing but my distribution yes or no agreed all of you yeah yeah it will go once it reaches you mean to say once my client gave and work to me i immediately say to the reporting manager dear reporting manager i got the work i got something work immediately reporting manager will say he will immediately say see you may be you may be leave tomorrow you may not work at times tomorrow assign the same work to some other person for a backup he will say assign the same work to some other person as a backup he'll say he'll say to whom i need to assign this have a copy have a copy of that okay say say for example this is yellow this is red okay give this copy two times to other person to this one and this one give it to three and four immediately he'll say yeah i'll go and give it this person will go and give it here once it is done even this data node even this is another team right another team member he will also say dear reporting manager i got it okay no issues tomorrow i may be leave suddenly you may not work you may put down your papers please put your please give the same work to some other person he will decide he will decide man reporting manager will decide on few criteria i'll come to that later many criteria it will consider Consider. Okay. Finally, how many copy of how, how many copy of red I have? How many copies of red I have? Three. How many copy of yellow? Three. So Three. that is nothing but replication. Please note it down. That is nothing but replication. right by default same on 20 mb no change by default the replication factor we call it as replication factor is three in hadoop Are you writing down clearly, guys? Not sure whether I can share this video, so please write down everything. I'll check with my team regarding the video. It's a different story, so please. Today, see, compared to tomorrow, today is nothing. Tomorrow is something very important. We're gonna do a sample project also. 
we're going to take the data from sql process the data using hive in hadoop and then we're going to put the results back to sql using scoop so please make sure the attend tomorrow that tomorrow is highly important than today okay today just we're going to end up with showing the cluster for you creating a cluster in azure we're going to end up like that okay so this was the hadoop cluster is we do have a backup for this name node also which is a stand secondary name node not exactly a backup at times yes secondary name node please note it down another laptop everything is a laptop here oh, okay okay just give me one second i'll explain okay in case of name not goes down second name not will take up immediately but not all the cases in few cases it will not i'll come to that later it's very deeper you know very deeper explanation just consider this kind of a backup okay coming to just explaining this again my client has 256 mb of data now it want to put the data into the cluster simple i went and gave i just moved the data to the edge node edge node is nothing but the client client wants to move this data to the hadoop cluster so it will first contact name node dear name node tell me where i can put this data name node will respond back dear client you can put in data node 1 and data node 2 well and good then immediately client will go put the data in chunk it and put the data in data node data node 1 and data node 2 once this receives the data once this receives the data okay this will report the data to information to reporting manager reporting manager will reply back dear data node you just received one uh, you just received one chunk right please replicate that in data node 4 and 3 and data node 4 please replicate that in data node 3 and data node 4 this data node 1 will go and put the replications here similarly this has got the replication right similarly this will respond back reporting manager will say name node will say you just got one please replicate yourself in 1 and 3 depending on the criteria it may direct to four also but i'm just telling you depends on the bird and etc etc so this is how that works what is replication three things you need to understand very high level replication before the replication heartbeat first is replication heartbeat balancing replication is that you understood the replication right but but the thing is like guys server i'm just explaining about the heartbeat right now okay very important we'll just wind up hdf is another five minutes and switch on to i'll just show you the cluster also today real cluster i just created the cluster today morning in azure that is available i'll show you what is name node what is standby name node what is this edge node what is this data node. So everything i'll be showing you today okay so in this data node in 128 mb what is heartbeat is for every three seconds for every three seconds data node will be keep on sending heartbeat to the name node that means i'll be keep on saying dear reporting manager i am still alive you don't worry i am working well i'm working well you don't worry i'm working well every three seconds data node will be sending heartbeat to name node getting it all of you just to tell the name node that i can't give for now ashutosh i can't give such power right now yeah okay yeah so data node so this data node is something sending heartbeat to yeah, for every three seconds for every three seconds right suddenly okay what happened client client right right now when client reaches back okay reaches back this client is reaching back to the reporting manager dear name node please give me chunk of which i just gave it will say please go and collect it here from these two nodes client will go and collect this node fine all good but suddenly suddenly what this node has stopped responding this node has stopped responding that means it is not sending a heartbeat getting it all of you then reporting manager will not have communication with this data node at all 
that's the main issue right and getting the point all of you any questions at this moment no yeah no no so it will it will it will it, uh, it will stop responding that mean when one client is asking me reporting manager please give me that red chunk report name not can't direct this client to go to hit because it's not sending a heartbeat instead this is directed to go and check out here getting this right then directly go and direct here so that's how it works but can anyone tell me this chunk this particular name node is not data node is not responding right now tell me what is the replication factor for red right now it's two it's two because it's not responding that time name node will send information to this data node day data node you have a chunk right please put a chunk in data node to to make it possible and even for this you have only two please put a chunk here so such a kind of data movement will happen it's a cluster administration right see in case of any issue occurred with the blocks that will be automatically divided etc etc so this is how the cluster management administration will happen heartbeat under replication this is nothing but under replication such things will happen i'm telling you in very high level guys i'm not going very much deeper it's not needed for the for this workshop till tomorrow uh, in, that's the reason i am skipping few things which is not needed for now hi aditya i ha i have a small question yes santosh yeah uh, this data node is not uh, responding to the client right so this comes under the data node failure yeah yeah uh, then can you explain me the when does a name node failure occur and when does this switch to a backup node called secondary node uh okay that's not a doubt it's an additional information right okay yeah. see that's a big story if i start to say when data when the name node fails because for that i need to explain the metadata management i just explained about the administration even cluster administration let me explain it fully i take for one and a half hours to do metadata management is a very big story in which second name node will come into picture journal node will come into picture edit log fs image zookeeper failover controller it's a very big story in case of failure of name node right so in for now for this workshop part just consider this as a basic part even cluster administration i didn't explain about the balancing yet i didn't explain about over replication nobody is asking me okay three replication happened what happens is suddenly gone up this node suddenly started giving the heartbeat that time what is the scenario it's a very big story we'll explain it later but first understand okay i have a name node i have a standby name node i have a data node clear right all of you this say according to this uh, is look like uh, uh, this uh, uh, node uh, name node is working like a zookeeper uh, if we take the example of the cup not a zookeeper exactly uh, yeah what i can say is not only zookeeper i can say name node is not only zookeeper you can put it that way it will do a lot of work because it's also a cluster monitor zookeeper is just a cluster monitor failure and etc etc but it will do a metadata management name node is something more powerful than zookeeper in other words okay getting it right all of you any questions so far Not right. You don't want me to bit and explain about replication again. This part. No, uh, this factor is fine. Ah, uh, Navin, balancing. Okay, guys, give me one one sec. I need to give some additional information now. Okay, see, because I am not satisfied. See, I got this. three replications well and good right three well three three replications well and good what i told suddenly this particular node is not responding then name node will come to know okay these two blocks are under replicated 
these two blocks are under replicated because guys please switch off your videos if anyone find that you are switching on the videos please minimize it guys that's what i do me please minimize this box but my suggestion is don't switch off your videos it will interrupt others i can't concentrate on those things for now please so here it is under replication under replication it means immediately name node will say dear data node you have a chunk right please move that chunk here please move that chunk here done sorry done mode chunk is moved but suddenly what happens this name node started responding back now what is the replication right now it will be four it will be four which is nothing but over replication agreed over replication yeah that time you know what happens name node will simply send an instruction to this data node dear data node you just gone up you just gone up your 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 the chunks which you have is already replicated in other nodes please drop all your blocks what is the replication now three but this node is free other nodes are bit of hectic yes or no right yes sir then i'll pass a balancing command there is a balance balancing command if once i run that it will the this will be distributed the burden will be distributed that's what is balancing is getting it right now are you clear with the balancing it's a very deeper guys please don't go penetrate more on hdfs because this is not admin we just most concentrate on the development part execution like that so the so the most probably understand what is name node data node secondary name node that's it clear all of you so far any questions here yes. It is clear, Aditya. Like uh, balancing, is it a regular uh, uh, activity, periodic activity? It's a, it it's a script. Somebody? It's a script. It's a Unix script. Hadoop FS hyphen balancing. Okay. That it's a Hadoop command. It command. It's a command. That's a command trigger to name node. Name node will then do the balancing part. Oh. That that is not part of uh, the data node recovery, right? Like as soon as the data node is recovered. only what it has it has been instructed is to clear out its block because there is already over replication exactly so that is only that as part of uh, recovery perfect perfect exactly perfect so everyone is clear with this basic information on how to cluster any gaps yes. any doubts right i just created one hadoop cluster in the morning okay i just open and showed you right so uh, i can show that hadoop cluster what is the name node present because every navin yeah so so to know this cluster information to know this cluster information for cloudera you have known as cloudera manager or come to this cloudera whatever okay it's a very big story For hot and works distribution, how do you distribution distribution? To have Ambari, I just created five, six, four node cluster. I guess I just created a four node cluster this morning. Let me go to Ambari and show you. Okay. Oh my God! Is
Just one sec, let this get deployed. Guys, have you learned anything today? Somehow we'll be winding up in the five minutes. Any good or you know, big data at least, bit. Great knowledge about the big data. Sorry, unable to hear you, sorry. Today I have learned a lot of things about big data because I'm a little bit familiar with the Kafka as well. So okay. it's relevant with information. So. It's a very nice experience. Actually, you just I just covered 0.001% of big data today. <laughs> That's it. Uh, please try with the reset of password. Okay, let me go ahead with this SSH user. Uh, sign, by the chance, you have, do you have any link uh, by which we can go ahead and uh, get all the information? Uh, how we all this? And all these, uh, like any hard written uh not actually um uh, like actually that that comes under part of our course actually like actually we are from zebron zebron.com like that comes under part of our course uh okay let this before this gets created let me explore give an overview mean or just copy this Just give me two minutes, guys. Just give me two minutes. Okay. Meanwhile, the, the reset the reset will happen. So actually, I am from Zybron guys. We usually provide trainings on, especially on big data. Okay. So there are many components. Let me share the components. Meanwhile, the password get reset. Let me share the components which we train people. So. These are the components which is which comes as a part of our course guys. We just offer uh, basic advanced one and advanced two till the cloud. We provide for Hadoop, Spark, as well as cloud-based like Azure. We're trying to introduce AWS as well. So we actually from uh, launched in Chennai, and these are the components which we give training uh, on big data. Okay. So in case of our course, we just divide the entire course in three phases. Advanced one, I'm sorry, basic advanced one and advanced two. The training starts with what is software is all about, like very basics. Because many people has come to me from non-IT background who got placed already. If you see the testimonials, the images also present. Few testimonials in my website are completely non-IT people. Right? So they got trained in from the scratch, from software, then you start start with data evolution. Then you will see Hadoop introduction, then HDFS 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Then you will see Linux commands, Hadoop commands. Then you will see Scoop, MapReduce, and Hive. You will have two real time projects at that moment. But this is everything that goes for 100 hours. Entire course go with 100 hours, not very small portion I'm just providing. It's a very big portion. And then you will have two real time projects after that. After completing the basics, you will have advanced one, Spark core RDD operations, transformations, actions, SQL, Spark data frames, Spark data sets, and HBase. After completing that, we'll be having uh, one of the real-time projects again. And you, this project, I'll just show you the projects. This is the first two projects, Scoop Incremental Data Processing, Scoop Semi-Structured Data Processing of Avro. And after you'll see, after Spark, you'll see few of the, one of the banking project, uh as a part of batch processing 
after completing advanced one you will have advanced two as well kafka nifi spark streaming spark structured streaming scala pyspark cassandra oz scheduler and you will have azure microsoft azure at the end of the course in which you will have to create a cluster in hadoop and then we'll move it further that's what we do these are the other two projects as a part of spark streaming right so this is the fifth project in spark structured streaming and this is a syllabus this is an entire syllabus which you can you can you can opt for that this is totally 100 hours of session completely 100 hours of session in which all the recordings will be you'll have access for all the recordings till the end of the session for a lifetime not only till you have a lifetime so, uh, access for 100 hours of session includes every every component which i'm just showing in the screen so the fee is very less the fee is just 17000 17 uh and for workshop five enrollments will be open five discount enrollments for 17000 fee you just have to pay it in two installments one one with 8.5 and other one with 8.5 first 8.5 installments you will be paying after 15 hours of session you will not pay and join you will join and pay after 15 hours of session another 8.5 you will pay after 50 hours of session after one month that that is a normal enrollment we do have something known as discount enrollments okay discount enrollments is nothing but you will you, you can opt the same course for 14000 same course guys can you hear me yeah now we can yes yes it is audible now sorry sorry so the entire course is 17000 guys so you can pay it in two installments 85 and 85 first installments will be after 15 hours of session second 8.5 will be after 45 hours of session almost like you have to join after 15 hours you will be paying it it's not like join pay and join it's about join and pay and then if you're falling under five enrollments discounts will be there for first five enrollments from workshop after this workshop five enrollments will be open for discount in which you can opt the same course for 14000 itself one four out of which you will be paying 2000 right now and you can pay six and six later first six after 15 hours other six after 45 hours so this all the course it will go on three and a half three and a half months to four months we have already successfully completed 21 batches and from next week you're going to start with 22nd batch yeah you can ping me if anyone interested uh, at my personal are there any prerequisites required not the prerequisite come with a very blank mind that's what i want because i can i can build up as i like if you're coming with any prerequisite then i have to demolish that first yeah that's what but uh, actually i heard like you know, for map reduce i mean uh, it would be good if you have a knowledge and you know <laughs> okay let me, kind of... let, let, let me tell me let me tell about myself like i am this is sai aditya i'm currently originated in hyderabad but the company launched in i'm working in one of the mncs i don't want to give the name i uh, hyderabad oh, so top most mnc but uh, i didn't give the name but so i am because i am working in a private limited company and my company is also zebron is also private limited so i can't believe that so i been I, my total years of experience is almost close to 8 out of which i started big data from past 5 years my experience is almost 5 years i started my big data career where i can't even find a proper stack overflow references for big data i can't find solution for anything so i just started my career at the time i was a manual tester i was not even a developer but okay. it took a bit of time for me to grow in my career right my like data java is required everything see i just originated from very scratch so i know the pain of it just come with a blank mind i can i can direct you according many people got placed from non it people i almost trained 3 to 300 to 350 people in my career that's been a very long journey in my case so that's what it. will be the timing central so so next batch starts with 9 to 12 the same workshop timings which you are experiencing this week next week starts with same batch okay sai so, uh, i have a question yeah uh, push, uh, like uh, in the big data we use uh, two kinds of pushing like data pushing like it's a popping or uh, pop it uh, one is push uh, and the uh, something like that there is a, some what is the question which is asked from uh, one of my colleague that uh, which kind of uh, is api suppose that uh, as i am a developer, developer and uh, we are creating rest api so which kind of pushing we are using like a pop uh, pushing or uh, pop or push like uh, post get or you talk about 
talking about web services? I'm not, I'm not talking about the web services. Uh, okay. In the term for big data, there are two kind of enabling, like uh, for data pushing. Like uh, first okay. is I understand what you are I'll, I'll say, Ashutosh, it's a very big story. We'll discuss further because uh, in a very high level, I'm, I can understand it. I'll explain it mm. later in personal talk. So, so coming to the point, you will have all the course details, guys. You can sign testimonials, and uh, tomorrow is completely hands-on. Tomorrow you'll experience a lot of uh, changes in our uh, hands-on part because tomorrow we're gonna do a sample project also. If possible, I'll try to include. I'll. Uh, I guess it has failed. Uh, okay, let we'll do something tomorrow. We'll create a Hadoop Azure cluster in front of you. I'll create it because I'm facing some issues with the cluster login password. In front of you, I'll create a Hadoop cluster. And then we'll show tomorrow is the most important guys completely hands-on completely execution no i'll not be talking much i'll be explaining you after every execution okay so that's how it works if anyone ready to join the course please let me know each referral if you're referring someone per referral you have guys can you hear me now guys am i audible yes sorry guys so yeah that's how it goes so anyone interested please let me know if you are referring someone with, to learn this components uh to miss so am i audible right hope i'm audible yes yes aditya yeah so if anyone interested like uh your, your friends per referral you'll get a discount of 2000 if you're referring someone you'll get a discount of 2000 even though you're joining the course or not you'll get a 2000 as a complimentary for it. I just thought of adding the point. So tomorrow, let's meet tomorrow. Let's create a cluster in Azure, do the hands-on, create a sample project, and move forward. If anyone want to make use out of the five elements, please let me know. On that discount environment is only for the first five elements, like, like first in first time. Aditya. Yeah. Yeah. Aditya, it is uh, physically located in uh, Hyderabad, or it is on online. Uh, it's completely platform. online. Like how you are attending today, it's completely online. Okay. 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 Right. So, yeah. You can find you can find few other people here. Durai and Arunachal are completely non-IT background, so they are just they're highly used for non-IT. So they're completely non-IT who got placed. But I just kept four testimonials here. And if anyone interested, I can just add up to the current batch WhatsApp groups also. See how they are learning. What have been posted every day to day life. You get a better knowledge. Yeah. Anyone interested, please ping me after the session. The Discord elements is just only for the first five elements. And how can just ping me the WhatsApp? Just ping me the WhatsApp. You can you can note down my number also if anyone interested. Uh sound three nine five eight double nine double four eight. And most probably that five might be open, but not sure. Because nine ninety got connected, almost ninety people got connected. They filled up any time. But let me know if interested. This is the case. Yeah, tomorrow we'll meet up. We'll create Azure Cloud. So tomorrow agenda is Azure Cloud, cluster creation, scoop, hive, spark, sample project. And all of you? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. Meet back tomorrow, same time, 9 o'clock. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ya, halo. Ya, Ram. Ya, ya. Ah, ah, ini 